So here is a story. Uh, not long ago, a few months ago, one of my clients from another continent asked me what to do in this situation. Uh, I call that story the, the child singing on the bathroom floor. So a few of you that came to other workshops on this tour have heard this story. Uh, so I really love telling it. So this father has three children. Two of them are already almost in bed. He's putting them in bed. But the six years old boy is doing some art and no matter how much he calls him, he's like downstairs in uh, their playroom and play area and he's painting. And the father keeps telling him, go get ready for bed, you have to get up in the morning, come on, get ready for bed. And the child either doesn't answer, is too absorbed in his art or he's uh, saying just a minute, just a minute, uh, and he doesn't come up. And eventually the father makes the mistake of listening to his mind that tells him the child should listen to me and the child should go to sleep. And he goes there and he picks up the child, trying to be gentle, but probably the child feels that there is angst and, and uh, anger. And he takes him and puts him in the bathroom and tells him, now get ready for bed, you know, brush your teeth, put your pajama on and join us in bed. The, you know, they were in the family bed. And he closes the door and he goes back to read stories to the other two children that were laying in bed. And he's reading and reading, children are almost going to sleep, and the six years old does not show up. Where is he? So the father goes like, what's going on? Where is he? And he cracks the door open to see what is he doing? Is he getting ready? And he finds his son laying on his back on the floor singing. And unfortunately, he got, he listened to his mind and got angry. So at this point, you know, he believed initially that the child should have gone to bed. And now he believed that he should do what daddy said and get ready in the bathroom. And instead, a child is laying on his back and singing. So in reality, what happened is the father got angry and it took much longer to go to bed because he was angry, he was expressing his anger, the child started crying, they had a whole scene and that took a long time to calm down from and to go to sleep. Because forcefulness never works, but it's that self-determination that you have, that I have, that we all have, that he was struggling against. I need to have autonomy, the child says. I need to be in charge of my life. So then he asked me, of course, so Naomi, what would you do? How could I handle it better? And I did some work with him. I had him write down the thought for the first part of the scene. And you can ask yourself, like if you imagine a similar situation, it could be same story. It's very, it doesn't have to be art, but it's, you know, when your child doesn't come to dinner, obey you, come when you call them to get ready or, you know, anything similar like that. The thought, he should listen to me, or he should do as I say, or he should get ready for bed in this specific case. Is that true? Why should he? Do you listen to others what to do with yourself at a given moment? If you were really busy and absorbed in playing an instrument, writing an email, watching a movie, or, or doing art, would you think it's all right for somebody who says, hey, stop? Now you have to go do this. How many of you would do that? Who are we? Who are we fully that we think that a child is any different than we are? Why not completely respect them? So he did the work and he should listen to me and question himself with my help. Is it true that he should listen to me? I mean, he probably heard him, but that doesn't mean he should. You know, he thinks listen in terms of obey. It's really a deceptive sentence, my son should listen to me. What he really meant to say is my son should obey me. And obedience is the worst thing to do to children. If they obey, they are in fear. And fear is indeed very toxic, and very destructive. So my son, should, my son should listen to me. He realized, no, that's not what I want. I want my child to be confident, not to be afraid of me, not to obey me. 
It's just not true. So he realized if he didn't have that thought, he would have been indeed peaceful. And the peace of our children starts with our own peace, our own not fighting, not going against what's happening. So he said, so we turned it around. So what is true? Well, the truth was that he should listen to the child. And listening to the child is many times when they're young, a matter of noticing, watching, because we need to respond, not to react from our thinking and emotions, but to respond to what is. What is was the child was absorbed in art project. Why interrupt such awesome, and it doesn't have to be awesome, it could be, you know, it, it, well, anything they do, I was going to say just watching a bunch of ants, but that's just as awesome. And so is everything, you know, he's absorbed, <laughs> absorbed in something. But it could be something as simple as eating or, or uh, showering longer than we want them to, or we can't want for another person any more than we can breathe for another person. Anyway, there is a way to make this room a little cooler. Yeah. Others feel it's a little stuffy here. Yes. <laughs> That's the request. Thank you. Um, so the next question was, so I should listen to him for the first part and, and realize, so he asked me, okay, so how would I have done it? And I said, well, look and see, if you feel peaceful and you're looking into the other room, thank you, that may start, and <laughs> And you see your child doing his art, and imagine this is a grown-up you really appreciate, then you'll know how to behave. What would you do? And he said, I would quietly and respectfully walk away. And it's all right to, and I said to him, well, it's all right to say to the child, I see you're busy with your art. Your brother and sister and I are going to bed. When you're ready, you can get yourself ready. If you need help, then just call me. That would be totally peaceful, right? and probably got him to bed a lot sooner, knowing that you know they're already in bed and that he's respected and that he has autonomy, that he's being acknowledged, it's your power, it's your doing, you decide. So that was for the first part. But let's say we goofed the first part. We're gonna make mistakes, right? We're not becoming perfect parents, not possible, good for our children, they have issues, they will have it's all right. So but we want to improve, we want to do better, we want to be more peaceful. So let's say the first part he didn't do well, he picked him up, he put him in the bathroom. Now he looks through the crack of the door, he sees the child sitting on the bathroom floor. So again, I ask the man, so how would you do without your thought he shouldn't be sitting on the bathroom floor, he should be obeying me and getting ready for bed. And he looked at that and he again realized without the thought, without the expectation, he would be peaceful. And I said, well, how would you be there? And he said, his idea was, I would probably sneak in quietly and lay on the floor and join him. Which I thought was really sweet, doesn't work with every child, but maybe he knows his child and it worked for him. Right? So you join and have a good time and it's like a peacemaking. I know I misbehaved before, but here I am with you now, and we're singing together, a duet. Uh, I suggested that for most children, that would be kind of stealing their show, or invading their privacy, he's doing his home therapy. I know that my children, especially I'm thinking of one child who sang to himself a lot, would really not want me to do that. <laughs> it would really be infuriating to him, to him that I come and all of a sudden change his direction and turn it into duet. It's like more control, patronizing. Okay. So I suggested to really be careful with this fun la di da and joining you, I'm good now, I'm not coercing you anymore, we're friends now. And to maybe just respect the child and close the door and let it be. So that would be my preference uh, and my idea to be on the safe side, although the singing with the child, with some children when you know your child well, um, it could sometimes work. But the, the beautiful thing is to look at 
and what this guy looked at, okay, why should he sing on the bathroom floor? Because when we do the whole process of looking at truth, it's not true that he shouldn't sing. It is true that he should sing. How do I know? Because he is. How do I know it should be sunny right now? Let's look. That's how I know. So anytime the mind has, it should be raining right now, I'm insane. I'm looking at a sunny day and I'm saying it should rain right now. I'm insane. And we're insane often. We say all these shoulds that are not reality. My child should listen to me. Not reality. My child should not be sinking on the bathroom floor. Not reality. He's sinking on the bathroom floor. That's what's right. So the essence, another essence of what I teach, your child is always right. Right as not right and wrong, but has a valid reason to do what they do. So I help this man look at what are some, a few reasons why the child should be on the bathroom floor singing. Well, the first one we came up with was the child is stressed out by being coerced by his father. His autonomy was taken away. He was feeling helpless and angry. What a great self-therapy. You know, he's saying to himself, okay, he forced me into the bathroom, but he's not going to force me to brush my teeth and get in my pajama. I'm going to decide when I do that, and I'm going to do something else now. If I'm not led to do my art, I'll do my, my music. Sing my own lullabies, relax myself. Which is a double win. Not only he's regaining his autonomy, He's actually do it in a very therapeutic way where he is actually calming himself down, probably saving us time on lullabies if we don't like doing them. I mean, I loved doing it, so I don't know about saving time, but some of us are anxious that the children will go to sleep. So he's already doing the lullabies. He's doing the self-therapy to, so he can easily move on with his father. The father doesn't even have to say I'm sorry and do a therapy session and forgiveness session. The child is doing forgiveness because he's completely relaxing himself and healing himself from that experience of his autonomy being taken away from him. And if the father just left him there alone, how long do you think he would have stayed? He would see himself and start feeling sleepy and eventually get up and get in pyjama and come to bed. A lot faster than the way it happened when the father was angry. 